short videos I wanted to make um, in which I'm going to illustrate the steps in making a carbon transfer print. And these really aren't designed to be um, tutorials or the substitute for a workshop, but might give you um, a good idea of what goes into making a handmade carbon print, a little bit about all, all process printing. And it might be something that you know might get you interested in taking a workshop and trying this out on your own. Um, before we get started, one thing I will note um, is you'll notice that I'm working in my kitchen. Um, and I like working in my kitchen with the non-toxic materials. I've got a lot of light in here. It's really easy. It's actually really good for shooting this video. So I'll be doing some things in the kitchen kind of for purposes of illustration. Um, and generally it's safe, but just a, a word about safety. When you carbon print, you will hear me talk about using um, dichromate. And so just, you know, as a note of safety, um, anytime you use dichromate, don't use it um, anywhere around food or anywhere where people could potentially ingest it. Um, dichromate doesn't fume, it doesn't off-gas, but um, if you ingest it, it's definitely like the baddest of the bad. So, um, just wanted to mention that first. So, uh, just to give you an overview of how a carbon print is made, um, here we have um, a finished print. And this is printed on um, Arch Plantain uh, watercolor paper. And this is watercolor paper that's been coated with gelatin. We'll cover that later. Um, the image itself is formed by a layer of gelatin with pigment. And one of the things about carbon prints that's so wonderful is the pigments are typically um, pigments like um, lamp black carbon. So they're totally archival, absolutely permanent. You get a really nice natural tone. You can also um, vary the pigments to get pretty much any tone that you like. So the way this image was created is we start with some materials that we're going to make, and that's what we're going to cover first. And so what you're seeing here is a, a piece of what we call printing tissue. It's not really tissue. Um, the word tissue, I think, is an artifact of when this process was created back in like the late 1800s. What this is, is it's a substrate. In this case, I use a product called Yepo. It's a substrate of Yepo that's been coated with a mixture of um, gelatin, pigment, in this case, speedball, uh, India ink, sugar, alcohol, and maybe some other additives. And I'll explain this in a minute, but again, get back to the point. The way a carbon print is made is that make the tissue, prepare your paper. Um, again, if it's like watercolor paper, you're going to uh, coat it with gelatin. Um, you can also print on fixed out photo paper, which is probably the best thing to do if you're starting carbon printing, because it's a lot simpler. I'm not a big fan of fixed out photo paper. I love watercolor paper. It's a lot more work, but it's far more uh, beautiful. So prepare your tissue, prepare your paper. Uh, what you'll see me do in a subsequent video is we're going to sensitize this um, sheet of printing tissue, this sheet of dried gelatin and pigment with um, ammonium dichromate or potassium dichromate. Again, nasty stuff. Um, use very little of it. There are ways to use very little of it, but if you're keeping it around, you just got to be careful with it. Um, once we've sensitized this, we're going to take a negative, and the negative could be, it could be an in-camera negative, so it could be like a, you know, negative that you developed on film, shot on film, exposed directly to the tissue. Um, in this case, I'm going to be making um, prints with, uh, or I'll be showing you prints that are made with um, digital negatives. So these are negatives that were um, shot on film, scanned, maybe shot on digital, and then um, printed out on an inkjet printer. So what you're seeing here is the negative that was used to make this print. So negative sandwich of printing tissue. And then once we're done, and this thing has been exposed to ultraviolet light, there's going to be a latent image, and we're going to put this tissue down onto this piece of paper. We're going to make these two things together, and then we're going to peel them apart in warm water and do warm water development, which is a, a pretty 
amazing thing to see. Um, makes carbon kind of uniquely different than some other processes. So, in the next video, what I'm going to show is actually making this tissue, so coating it. That'll be in the next video. Um, what I'll do before we transition to that step is just give you a little bit of idea of how the glop is made. So the glop is the step we're going to coat this, um, this substrate with, this surface with. So basically, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, it's going to be a mixture of water and food grade gelatin. So I typically print with a 10% solution. So I've already mixed this up. So this is um, 150 grams of gelatin in a solution that I'm going to use to make about a liter and a half of glop. So you mix it up and you let it swell. You can see um, it's not going anywhere. Um, I'm going to melt this on a hot plate and get it liquid and get it clear. And then once it's liquid, melts at about 95 degrees, um, I'm going to mix in some pigment. Um, I primarily use these um, India inks, carbon black ink, um, kind of like Sumi inks. It's carbon pigment made typically from vegetable oil soot. So absolutely beautiful absolutely archival. Um, again, the thing about these prints is you can, you know, take one of these to the back window of your car for 50 hot Texas summers and it's not going to fade. Um, they're absolutely permanent. So I'm going to mix in um, an amount of pigment based on um, sort of my formula and how I make my prints. Um, one of the more unusual ingredients is sugar. So people ask why sugar? It seems kind of weird. Um, Sugar is a plasticizer, so you'll notice that this tissue is pretty flexible. This is dry, hard gelatin, but it's not cracking, and that's largely due to the sugar. So the sugar helps keep the tissue plastic. It also helps it absorb water. So when we do the warm water development, what we're basically doing is dissolving the unexploded gelatin, and this is what's going to help us do it. Always keep around a little bit of um, alcohol. And what alcohol is used for is it kind of breaks the surface tension um, of liquids. So whether it's water or it's glop or it's some, something else you're using in the process, um, alcohol is great for kind of helping bubbles leave a liquid. So we're going to mix this stuff up and we want to use it soon. And it's going to be kind of thick and viscous and we want all those bubbles out of it because one of the main enemies of a good carbon print is bubbles. If you get bubbles, it can ruin your print. Um, lastly, in this batch, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm also going to mix in an additive. You can use starch. In this case, it's um, colloidal silica, um, which is recommended to me by a friend. And uh, the point of the silica is that the surface of a carbon print can't really see it so much in this one, um, but definitely in this other one. The surface of a carbon print can have kind of a glossy sheen. So in addition to controlling like the kind of pigment and the tone, um, you also want to be able to kind of you know control the sheen of the print. And so I'm going for some prints that are a little bit more matte in their surface appearance. So I'm going to um, mix in a little bit of this. So again, just to recap, heat this up, get it nice and liquid and clear, mix in these ingredients. Last thing I'll do after everything's mixed up is I'll filter it and pour it back into this jar. And uh, the point of filtering is that um, some gelatins, because it is an animal product, contain little bits of stuff. And <laughs> you definitely want to filter those out. I also think that um, filtering through cheesecloth or some kind of fabric um, does a tremendous job at helping mix in the pigment and any other kind of additive. Um, you, you can't believe how hard it is to actually um, completely mix different liquids together. Um, it can be quite a chore. So anyway, that gives you an overview of uh, where we're going to get started. We're going to get started with making materials. Um, probably take a look, little bit of a look at uh, preparing paper in another video, so coating paper. Once we have our tissue and our paper, um, we'll take a negative, we'll expose the tissue, We'll put the tissue and the print together. And then, then once we're done with that, it's a lot of work. 
<laughs> Once we've done all that, then the exciting, um, fun part begins. The moment of truth when we'll actually um, put this in a bath of hot water. It's about 104, 105 degrees. We'll melt the unexposed um, gelatin. We'll peel this off. And if we're lucky and we're skilled and we've we've uh, we've been a good carbon printer, we'll get an image. We'll get you know we'll get a nice print out of it. So anyway, um, that's where I'll leave off for now. And um, next thing I'll cover is going to be making or rather coating up this tissue.